Hey, hi everybody. I hope we're on. It's now 7 p.m. Mountain Time and I'm Nettie Kay. I am really looking forward to tonight's broadcast uh, in studio uh, with you guys live on YouTube. And I'm going to tackle something a little bit different tonight. We're going to be doing a, um, a an actual, uh, we're going to be painting a building or a bunch of buildings, which is crazy for me because this is not what I normally do. I normally uh, paint things that are a little bit looser without, you know, all the edges and straight lines. But I want to show you that it can be done. It can be done. And I'm realizing that my sound might be a little bit down tonight. So I'm going to just hold this up and see. Oh, that's a little better. I can't paint and hold my microphone way up. But uh, little by little, we're going to adjust and see if we can get uh, get all of our technology up uh, up and running. So uh, anyway, I'm recording this on two different cameras. So every once in a while, I'm going to be looking over here and then some over here. But uh, hopefully, we'll have something good in the end. Okay, well, enough yammering on. Tonight, I am working on a piece for our winter carnival in McCall. And uh, we're painting... Uh, a girlfriend uh, artist called um, Deborah Bonsack. I just spent the afternoon with her. It's been wonderful. Hey, Deb. Uh, we are doing a special, a special um, focus on paintings and artwork from around town. And so I'm really excited around McCall, Idaho. And we usually have Winter Carnival this week, every year, forever and ever. Thank goodness they changed it to February 23rd because we just barely have any snow at all. I can't believe it. So the lake even started to thaw instead of freeze. So we're really kind of in a little bit of trouble here as far as our skiers are concerned. But hopefully by next week, we'll have some more. Anyway, so I'm doing the hotel McCall. Uh, I've got a photo that I'm working from. Um, this is my photo that I took at the intersection uh, in town in the middle of the day. In class, we've been doing nighttime scenes. Oh, I better get that in the right frame here. Nighttime scenes, but uh, of the same hotel at a slightly different angle. And we've been just having a blast with it. So anyway, how would you tackle something that is so complicated? Well, hmm. Let's see. I, uh, you know, it's it's very different. Uh, we've got it at an angle. Now I'm going to hook up my little microphone so that I can put this down. <clears throat> Here's my theme song again, clearing my throat. <clears> throat> I've got a little bit of a layout. One of the things that I will do is I, of course, in your camera you've got your little tiny little photograph, and some of you guys work from iPads. I get it. You know, you can expand and contract, but um. I blew this up to just the full size sheet. And then on top of that, I went back in and I blew it up even further, the size that I wanted it to lay out. So I put this over here and went, okay, that's about the size of that building. And then I had some other pieces. Oh, and I, you can even cut out the buildings and tape them on and kind of get a feel for where things go. And then on top of that, I might use a big, huge uh, yard stick. And the reason I'm going to use that is for the sake of angles. And so I'll come across here like this and I'll say, all right, this is going back into space. I could put myself a little point of, uh, you know, my little disappearing point. What is that called? Man, I'm drawing a blank over here, and I can make my lines all go to that like this. Or I can hold this up like this and say, or I can tape it to the tape it to my canvas and then mark what the angles are. So I can match the angles of the roof lines that go like this. And then if I'm up here, I can match that one and I can pick this up and go, okay, is that one correct? Yes, that one's correct. Like that. 
and then down here I can double check and say, well, where where are the where's the bottom part of the buildings, and at what angle are those? And so I just hold my little my little um, ruler like this or my yardstick like this, and I start working it from both angles, and and work my way through it if I don't really understand what the angles are. So I can have that dot out here that I connect things to that might help me a little bit. And I can make a, um, a mark on there. The one thing that I want you to realize is that when you're painting something like this, and I just realized my little, my camera just slid. Um, when you're painting something like this, uh, it will, um, the, the vertical lines on all these buildings, unless you've got a barn that's falling down, are always up and down, regardless of what's happening with these angles right here. Okay, that roof line is going that way, that's going this way, uh, and these are going this way. Well, then you're thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to figure this out? The main thing is that all things, it's going to get smaller as it goes back into space. All right. Should have probably done telephone poles in a field, but I wanted to try this. But everything that goes up and down, all the windows, um, doorways, everything that is up and down is always up and down. All right. Uh, they don't go sliding off, going sideways or at any other angle. They go up and down, vertical, up and down. And so at least we know that. All right. At least we know that. So what I'm going to work with today, I'm going to work with uh, acrylic. And I know you guys know I'm an oil painter for the most part. I've got this piece of canvas. As you can see it's all wrinkled. I just put it over another canvas. Uh, but I'm going to use this acrylic. I've got a little bit of acrylic paint blopped on here and some pencil marks and stuff. But I'm going to use my acrylic to start with and work things out. And then if I don't like it, I just put a bunch of gesso over the top. Yay, that works out, that works out good, yes. So uh, let's just see how far we can get. Don't get fussy with it, that's the main thing. You know, you wanna see if you can fit everything in, yeah, that would be nice. But really, uh, maybe try something a little bit smaller than this when you, when you do something, maybe a little less, maybe like just one barn. Yeah, that would be good. Anyway, I've got, three values that I'm working with. I have a dark right here. This is my dark black paint in a thing. It's very mucky. Um, it's runny. That one's actually a liquid black. This is just white gesso. Okay. White gesso in a little thing. And then I also have a little jar that I've mixed white and black together. And I've got gray. Now, in the end, I'm going to paint over the top of this. This is called the underpainting. Okay, so I, I'm just finding some of the tonal values. I'm just putting, I'm loosening myself up and wiping this brush off. I've got a middle tone here. And I know I don't have a photo set up for you guys. Sorry about that. I'm going to get better at this over time. You think I'd be really good at it by now, but when you're doing live, it's a very different ball game. You hope you're on and you don't know because you have no clue. You have no clue. My husband uh, is teaching on Thursday nights, so he can't really help me out. He's, he's doing a GED program for um, people that are wanting to get their, their high school diploma uh, equivalency. And so he's very busy on Thursday nights. So I am on my own. So now you see, I'm just getting a little bit of paint so I can work with something. And then I've got, I've got a few little things that I've worked on over here, tiny bit. I'm going to take some of my dark paint and I'm going to find where these lines are. So I've got a little line right here. That's a kind of a shadow. And I'm going to paint a bit of a shadow under here. They should be at the same virtually the same angle. And then I'm going to come across, I, I've got to decide, this building is going back a little bit into space. And so I want to make sure, and boy, if you're a little dyslexic like I am, 
um, you can end up having it go in the wrong direction. In fact, I think I just did. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit closer to straight. And then they have some darkened windows. And I may make this into a nocturne later, you know, a night piece. We'll see. Because I've been enjoying doing some night pieces at uh, my class right now, making light bulbs glow. So we could make the inside of this uh, this coffee shop called Fog Lifters. Little shout out to Fog Lifters. Uh, really enjoy going there. Not so much for coffee, but for eggs Benedict. That's a lot of fun. Now I've got this angle. So this this roof line goes this way, and then I've got another angle that is so it comes out like that, and then it turns. There's a corner piece right about there. That's where the corner of the building goes. And then it turns in that direction and the door is somewhere over here. I'm not getting fussy with it. I'm not fussy, fussy, fussy. No, I'm not. I'm just keeping my brush nice and loose. I don't have a tiny little two hair and some airbrush. I don't have itty bitty brush. No, I don't want you getting fussy. That's the whole point of this exercise right now. And, you know, the main thing is that if it, if it doesn't work, see, those are, those are windows. Okay, that's fun. If it doesn't work, I'm just going to take some gesso or get another canvas or whatever. This is canvas that is uh, on a big roll. And it's not my favorite canvas, but it works. Um, it's just, you know, it, sometimes you want to make it smoother. And some point we'll do a how to make a canvas really smooth lesson. That'd be fun. And so this one, I'm going to give it just a little bit of a line there. Okay, that, that looks kind of interesting, you know. I want to make sure you can see that. Let's see. I've got a camera right here that just kind of keeps, you know, like one of those, uh, you know, I hate to say it loudly, the Alexa things that just, they watch you when you move around. I got, got one of those. I inherited one from my husband's mom that just passed. I feel like she's watching me. It's really funny. Okay. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to just take a little bit of my middle tone and mix it with my black because I don't want it too dark. Now I've got this and this is where the building turns. So I'm going to give myself just an indication. I've got this clock right here, which is really cool. It's an important part of the building. It's a little clock. Never sure if it's quite the right time, but I think it is. And so I'm going to put that. I've got lettering that I'll worry about later. And here is, there's another building right here that's slightly under this eave. And I'm going to make a little, it's got a really long roof line like that. And then it has a roof line that goes like that. It's, you're, you're kind of facing it right at this point. It's an odd angle. I'm out in the street right here. I'm out in the street. Actually, I shot it out my car window, but it worked. And... Then I've got this little roof line, and then it has, this is a little insurance place uh, that's been here forever, just tucked in there. There's another one. And so I've got, this is going to be slightly shorter than that because the building is at an angle, okay? And it's going back like that. So this is going to be a little bit longer, but the windows are up and down, up and down. The little doorway is a little skinny doorway there. And then the window, you see a little bit more of that. And it looks like there may be, is there an eave over that? Well, we won't worry about it. And then this has got a little, little fancy thing. This is actually a little rock wall right here. McCall is so fun. It's got so many fun places to go. This is a, a staircase, so I've got to work that in. Notice I didn't get my ruler out. And then I have this, this part that goes, let's see, there's a wall that kind of goes like that. There are beautiful plants that usually are in here in the summertime. I'm going to darken this area over here. And then we'll put in, let's see if we can figure out some of the other little tough things to figure out. Not too dark, not too dark. Oh, I see. Now I have uh, an area here. This is the side of the building as it goes up like that. And now I'm going to take a little bit of my gray with the black. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Yeah, so I want that, that to be just slightly smaller there. And then I will come up at it 
like this. And then this one kind of comes up like that. This is a balcony right here. So I want a little thing here and then a little thing right like that. This is a little balcony. Oops, I just missed out on something here. This part comes down like this. I'm going to have to make an adjustment. Comes down. So there's a, a part of a wall that comes down and then comes over like that. I got to keep my brush nice and wet, nice and wet. And then this one inside is going to be a darker value because it goes back into space. There we go. And then I have a couple of windows that you can barely see tucked around the side over here. If you uh, are doing something like this, now this is a flat roof too. It doesn't have one of these. And so the snow sits on top of it and you hope it doesn't break through. But um, now that will come in like that and, and uh, connect up a little bit. Uh, and then, uh, so we have this little tiny, tiny little outcropping there. This part right here always helps if you talk out loud, you know. This part right here goes over like that. And then there's going to be a little bit of snow. And then I want to figure out where the side of that building goes. Oh, it slightly extends past this like that. And there's a little awning right here. Oh my gosh, can you believe this? This is just crazy, but it's doable, I think. Okay, and then this is going a little bit back into space. And so then we're gonna put in a couple of windows like that. I'm just kind of faking a few windows. There's a roof line that goes here. There's a, it's just a building behind it. There's something that comes in like this. And then you have like the little Hotel McCall entrance. I think it's going to go right off the side. That's okay. And then let's put in a little piece. Uh, this is the, the awning for the building. Let me see. It comes down like this. And then it goes out. Oh, I think it needs to be darker. It goes out like this. And then over like that. And then there's little windows down below. Okay, let's make those nice and you know, dark for this for the moment. And then we'll add. And when it's in acrylic, you can just keep adding more stuff to it. I want to make sure that the building itself, let's see, this little building is like that. There's a, actually right in here is a, a little passageway, I think, that you can get through to a courtyard back in here, which is fun. And then we're going to go at an angle, a nice sharp angle. It should be about the same angle almost as that. Faking it is really a tough one. You, you know, doing some calculations would be good, but uh, I, I just don't enjoy doing that. I've looked at it a few times and, and it, uh, it helps to blow it up for sure. Okay, so now I have a little roof that sticks out, picks up snow side of the building right here, I think. Oh, and there's a little window that goes around like this. So anyway, I'm not suggesting that you try something this crazy, you guys, but you know, don't be afraid of it either. It might be fun. And if it's, you know what I always say, uh, if it's all wrong, it's all right. So what does that mean? That means if you keep it stylized and you just kind of mess up all the lines and it looks kind of like an abstract or an expressionist painting okay uh if it's all correct if you've got one part that's really tight and really exceptionally uh detailed and then the rest of it's all kind of squirrely well that doesn't work out so good you know it just doesn't work out so uh yeah it's it's just uh you want to keep it all hopefully in the same style. So this is why you work over the entire painting at one time rather than finishing off a little corner at one time, okay? Because number one, by the time you make it over to the other end of the painting, you will have had this much more experience and your painting style might have shifted by then, you know? I'm just saying, that's what it could happen. So now I want to think about a few things like uh, how to get uh, this tonal value. Hang on. Let me just get this. I've got to put in a few more things like uh, I've got this window. 
I've got this awning right here. I've got a window and a window. Oh my gosh, and there's windows down here. So these have to come in. And then there's an awning there and then another window. One window, two windows, and then a third window under here. So just, you know, kind of loosely putting that in. And I'm going to put in also some of our really cool lamp posts. So there'll be a lamp post over here. A big lamp post. I'm going to put a big lamp post right there. The lamp posts are really neat. They're, they just glow at night. Super bright. I love it. And then we're going to put in another lamp post. Uh, I, in this paint, in this photo, you guys, is a lamp post that goes right up through the middle of the, the roof line, like right through here. Well, I don't want to put it there because the peak of the roof line will be right where the lamp post goes. I don't want to put it there. I want to put it either on one side or the other because, and I think it needs more stuff over here. So I'm going to put the lamp post right there instead, and I'll put some snow up like that, uh, instead of right in the center because I don't want that kiss of all those angles coming together. I want to make the little, little lamp post go, go like that. And then this one's going to be slightly bigger little lamp post like that and then there's another one that comes in right here and it's going to be smaller and smaller so it's going to come down like this and this one's going to be right like that tiny little lamp post there and if i have any more room i might put one more in but i don't want to get too carried away okay like that there we go all right and then there's a little fence that kind of comes in here so i'm just really kind of enjoying the process so i've got this one coming up here little stairs and then the planter box and the sidewalk. And I see this is funny because it's got snow. But then I'm going to put in the street down here and curve it around. Let me just get some water on my brush. I hope you can see that. Yeah, there it goes like that. And nice and loose. Loose, loose because this is a loose painting. And then the street comes in like this. And like that, yeah. Let's see. Now, before I get too much farther, I want to check, pardon my shoulder, I want to check to see if we are on board. It looks like it. Yeah, okay, good. All right, good. Uh, oh, all right, let's keep going. So now I'm going to grab a a little bigger brush, uh, about a half an inch brush like this. And I want to find a value. Value just means light, middle tone, dark. This is my gray value. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it because the value of the building right here is slightly darker than the snow. Okay, does that mean make any sense? Yeah, slightly darker than the snow. But it's not white so i'm going to come in with a, a middle tone gray again we're going to put this into uh, color at some point unless i like it just like this i might might decide i just like it this way and then we'll put that in i'm going to do a little bit more and then we'll go like this what is that oh that's the Sometimes you have to ask yourself, what in the world am I painting? And then we'll, we'll cover up some of those lines a little bit uh, underneath the clock. I've got the clock too big, but that's okay. I want you to see it. Okay, good. And then I have this, uh, well, let's, let's get it a little bit thicker than that because I want it cover up some of these lines a little bit and then i want to put a little thing there actually i'm realizing that this building it kind of comes out it's so weird it's got a, a roof that goes this way but it's got something else going on over here i'm just going to ignore it and just do my own architectural thing right there Nobody's going to know unless they're really fussy and go around. Oh, that's not right. I've been to McCall and I don't see that. Well, that's not what we're talking about here. Now, I've got a little shadow 
from this, uh, there's a little tree or something, and so I'm going to put a little shadow right there. And there's some shadows happening from some trees that are, are going to be there. And let's mix a lot of this dark gray, and we're going to find where that streak goes a little bit more. Got to get bigger. Crazy, isn't it? It's really, really crazy. All right, now. Let's go up in here and double check. No, I do need uh, something a little darker now for a couple little windows back in here. That pushes it just a little farther. Awesome. And then I'll make this. <clears throat> I've got to figure out what's going on here. I don't know if I'm going to focus on that right now. But I have these windows and these windows. And then, oh yes, our, our middle tone gray is going to come in like that. There! And then it's going to get a little lighter on this side. Yeah. It should be the same as that. And I'll get the lettering going. Sometimes I'll take a, uh, the lettering, blow it up, and then put a put a, a dark pencil mark on the back and then transfer the lettering onto the painting when it's dry because it's easier than doing it freehand. All right. Now this is a darker value here. Isn't this crazy? It's not very exciting sometimes when it's so gray, but, but I thought it would be kind of interesting for you to see. And then a little bit more here because this isn't directly in the light. Yeah, it's pretty close, but not quite. And it is a dark olive greenish color. Actually, this is really dark olive green. And we've got lots of wonderful shadows right like that. So how do I make this look like there's snow on the top? I'm going to take this sky color up above and I'm making sure you're in the frame. Yeah. And um, I'm going to make that come down on onto the snow like that and we're going to come in and make this sky value a middle tone middle tone middle tone why why don't you paint it blue well because i don't want to right now because i might make it in at night time at some point okay now in order to make my snow then i've got a little bit of snow on the top of this roof like this and I'm really loosening it up just making it look like it's it's snowy and then a teeny tiny bit as it goes back into space like that and then I'm going to put some more on this roof line here Ooh, that looks good a little bit down here now we're cooking with gas we're really just putting in a little bit of of snow coming up sometimes the snow you guys can get to be eight to 11 feet here in town and it isn't anywhere near that right now not anywhere near it nope not good not good global weirding is what we call it i don't know what it is in your neck of the woods let me know okay this is just a little bit of a rail not too much oh i've got a little bit on the top of that one a little on the top of that some down here like that and so snow on, whoopsie, oh, right there, a little bit of a, kind of blocks a little bit of the edge of the stuff, so it piles up on the sidewalk a little bit, and then that, that, all right, we've got that little roof line here, that's got a little bit of white on it, and there, and now I'm seeing where this goes, yep, there's the top of the is that the entrance to the, the hotel? I'm not sure. Depends on where you're standing. Yeah. So let's get a little bit more for our snow. Just a little bit. Isn't this wild? It really is. Okay, now back into our, our grayish color. And I'm going to put in a little bit. There's just slightly lighter there. I'm going to put a little bit of reflection. This is a light, light color a little bit. So it looks like there's something going on inside the window. Then I'm going to come in, add a little white to it. 
and we're going to come in and I'm going to take the edge of this brush and just drop it down. Now you get it straight. Whoops. A lot of oopses here. A little window like that. Some of you guys that are really, really fussy, this would just drive you crazy, wouldn't it? Doesn't drive me crazy. I'm happy. I'm happy to let it just go. And there's another little window right here. It's skinny because it's going back into space. And then there's like a doorway. There's the doorway back in there. I got to plunk a little bit more snow up here to make it look a little bit more white. There, and that goes all the way to there. I kind of like it, don't you? Uh, you might not. Keep your negative thoughts to yourself. That's right, we're trying to be positive here. That's right. Yeah, we want to talk positively about our art, especially when we're creating it, because there's always a really negative moment almost in every painting that we're working on. Anybody? Hello? Yes, raise your hand. Um, there's just these ugly phases that we have to get through. You don't paint everything so perfectly right off the bat because then that's just copying, okay? It's just copying and it's very stale, very stagnant. You want to kind of just cut loose, let yourself go a little bit and uh, just see see what comes off of there. It's a matter of of being aware of your angles. <laughs> okay, match your angles if you can. <clears throat> but then tackling it in a loose fashion. All right. I know that's kind of hard to do for some of you guys. It takes uh, takes a lot of practice. It just does. Okay, here's that. I'm gonna go a little bit like this. So what I'm saying is. Um, Oh, we were talking about this in class the other day. We start out, we start out as kids. Let's see, I want to make sure I've got the right number. Oh, there's a little thing that comes there. Uh, we start out as kids uh, when you're about um, three. I've got little Piper. She's my granddaughter, and she is a very left brain painter at three. What does that mean? Well, she doesn't care what it looks like. She just likes the feel of the paint. Do you? Sometimes we do. Um, and so she lets it go and she can paint some pretty beautiful pieces. I'm not kidding you. Um, she has done some stuff that has just blown my mind. They're not of anything. She's not trying to even paint a flower. She's just painting like crazy. And it's a lot of fun. So um, with that, a little bit later on, most of us get become very self-conscious of what it is that we're painting. And we shift then to our left brain and we begin painting as though we want to impress people. We want to make sure it looks just right because we want to hear them say, oh, it looks just like the picture or it looks just like the thing, right? Okay. And that's how we all, okay, 90% of us are going to be. And then we have to kind of learn to cut loose a little bit later and let it go and, and go back to that before we were self-conscious about, about things and let it go a little bit. So that's the, the key uh, is to, to, yes, be aware, you know, try to, these are little lights, by the way. Uh, try to figure out, uh, see, I'm not, I'm not making little teeny tiny lights with a pencil. I'm just dabbing these things in and trying to count how many there are. Who cares if I get, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. I'll uh, put one. Well, maybe I need to put one right there. Okay. And then um, I don't have to put every single little, you know, electrical outlet in. Uh that's funny. Um, so uh, we just kind of cut loose and let it go. And, and that's when you can really give the viewer something to look at. All right. Because so many times we fill in everything and we don't give them any, um, 
any mystique, anything to kind of figure out on their own. And so that that's kind of rough. It's kind of rough. And if that's your thing, if you want to make detailed paintings, at least make them interesting. Okay. One of my students, Angela, hello. She's really good. She's so good at um, being able to figure out, and she works so hard at figuring out tones and stuff. And the last painting that she's working on, uh, which is the Hotel McCall, she's got the, the, the lights really glowing. And that's going to make a viewer come up and go, wow, how the heck did she do that? That's intriguing. So whatever your style is, make it, make it intriguing, uh, you know, uh, to where there's something for the viewer. Whoops, I just lost my ruler here something for the viewer to do and i'm telling you it's been my whole life and i haven't been able to figure that out exactly now i'm getting closer but not quite um and so it's um it isn't an easy thing it's very obscure it's an obscure thing to figure out you know it's like well what are you talking about i can say it and say it and at some point if you ride your bike enough but you keep trying uh you're going to be able to get all the way around the block but at this stage, you might be able to understand and memorize what I'm saying. You might not understand it, you know, for six months or a year or whatever. It might take you a while to figure out what I'm talking about. Uh, you just have to get on your bike and keep working at it until all of a sudden the lights go on. That does, that's called a mixed metaphor. That doesn't make any sense. But you know what I'm talking about. You just keep, keep plugging away until the light bulbs go on and then it's like oh now i get what the heck she was talking about but the the other really main main thing i want to emphasize is that when you are uh working on something you know i if you just read about it or watch other people do it it's like watching somebody ride a bike or reading about how you're supposed to balance you cannot learn how to do it without getting a brush in your hand. So I appreciate you guys watching uh, and, uh, you know, making all kinds of weird comments like, what the heck is she doing? Yeah, okay, you can do that. That's all right. But until you put your, your little uh, paint brush in your paint, it's going to be very hard for you to understand. And it gives you the right to be able to say something, say, I've tried that and it didn't work, uh, or whatever, you know. Um, but it's just fun. We're playing around a little bit. So look how this looks so interesting right here, you know. If I put a couple of heads in there, put a little dot in there, make, make it look like this is where my husband and I have lunch right here. And uh, we have our eggs benedict. And so I can put myself in there if I want. I can put a little head in there. Well, I won't do that right now. But uh, anyway, it's, it's a fun thing to think about. You can doll it up, do whatever you want with it. I'm going to clean my brush off on here. This canvas is really, and don't worry about drips because that's interesting. All right, that's interesting. I was trying to find my squirt gun so I could get these drips. I couldn't find it. I've got a, a spray bottle that, uh, that I use for this kind of stuff too. And um, that's why it's so fun about this acrylic, too, is that you just, it, it takes a couple of minutes for it to dry, and then you can paint right over it if you've messed up on something. Okay, that's the joy of acrylic. My friend uh, Deborah Bonsack is a, um, she's actually a representative for the Golden Company and Golden Paints, in case some of you guys don't know what that is. And so uh, she's really awesome when it comes to acrylic painting and I hope you'll come and see some of her work uh, at uh, Gallery 55 in McCall. I'm very excited about it and she's doing some uh, special scenes for that as well and I'm trying to catch up. So um, anyway she's she's a little expert in um, in what the paints are made of and what they can do and I'm just kind of trying to learn from her too you know a little bit. We learn from each other we really do. Okay, now, here's the corner of the building, and I see that there's a window, a little bit darker window, that is really almost on the edge of the, that corner. Woo, gotta get a little bit darker. Oh my gosh, 
didn't get it up and down. That's okay. You can fix that with the, these windows are in threes, so I gotta watch out. Um, you can fix it with the, uh, the white when you go back in, and then I'm gonna figure out what that, oh, that angle is at this angle. So this is gonna come down a little bit further there, la la la. And then this angle is closer to being straight across, maybe. Anyway, hope you get the idea. Cut loose, just enjoy it. And then you're figuring out, <clears throat> pardon me, my theme song again. Uh, then you're figuring out what is going on. You uh, you know what happened? Okay, we, we started painting these buildings in different shapes and whatever in our class. And then you go downtown and you suddenly see it differently. It's like when you're painting your tree in your backyard, all of a sudden your eyes just open. And now you can really see what it really looks like more and more and more. These windows are a little over here. And so it you begin to really have your eyes opened. Uh, and it's really fun. It's really fun. This one's kind of a weird, weird angle like that. I guess these are awnings. So anyway, who's looking? Uh, and then I'm not going to get too carried away. Okay, back like this. Now, now I'm going to go back in here with my little Sharpie, sharp uh, edged brush. I hope I can get it sharp. Okay. I don't worry about it. It's too, too sharp because I'm not painting like that. All right. Now, this is not as dark, as light as, say, the snow on the roof. A little bit of snow on the roof like that. I'll make it a little bit lighter than that. So uh, let's see, I'm going to come in here and we're going to make a few little edges. And then I'm going to make that window a little bit skinnier. And then, oh, I see uh, the windows are just separated by a sill or a little, you know, you, you might want to be a little bit more careful with it than I'm doing um, like that. And then there's another set that goes, how much space is between it? I don't know. I've got to ask myself that. Anyway, so I'm just making a few little goofy looking windows. And now I'm going to come up where I think the snow is on top. Oh, I see there's a whole big thing up here. There's a, a thing that goes like that. And then this comes over like that. So it comes out of the wall. Oh my gosh. All right. Now up above, I'm going to put a little line down the middle, one on the side. That little window and then there's one that comes over here all right that's fun have i got everything that's the snow coming up like this and then like that there and that one's coming down like that a little more there and oh forgot a few windows over here so let's put a few more this is pretty picky isn't it whoa my goodness okay now this one's got oh this is fun uh, this is the, well, I'm not sure where the entrance, the entrance is actually back in here. So you go in past these windows and there's a little, actually a little driveway right in here like that. And there'll be some signs that we're going to put in. I'm not exactly sure. There's usually cars parked along here and then we'll go in and put in some of the, these little windows are kind of cute. Uh, might have to get a smaller brush at some point. But they have um, one, two, three, four. And then there's a little thing that goes over them like that. One, two, three, four. It, see how, how I'm just not worried about it. Maybe I should be. I don't know. And then uh, the McCall Hotel sign goes way off over there. And there's that. Okay, now, how are we doing for time? I, you know, I got this really cute thing. I got to show it to you. We're going to paint this probably next week. I'm not sure, but I got to grab it. Okay. Hang on. Leaning over. Hope I don't fall down. Look at this fun little alarm clock. Isn't that cute? And uh, I think it would make a neat still life at some point. So um, I'm going to challenge my class to that. Heads up, guys. It's going to be really fun. It doesn't have any batteries in it, so it doesn't help me when it comes to the time. Oh, we still have lots of time. I can't believe it. Oh, 
There goes my alarm clock. Okay, now uh, here's another tool. If you guys are really worried about straight lines, well, you can use a um, you can use a uh, palette knife. That kind of helps with edges and straight straight edges. You know that kind of thing. Or you can use this. This is fun. This is an old bank card. I hope it's old. It's not going to work very well at Albertsons if I go back with that. I accidentally uh, used the wrong one the other day and ended up causing all kinds of troubles. <laughs> I accidentally borrowed my son that I didn't mean to. I'm like, the pen's not working. Oh, dear. Okay, so for instance, what I can do is I can come along. I'm going to dip my card into some, it might be a little too thick, into some white gesso like that, okay. And I can come in and, and do, well, let's try this. Maybe this part of the building where it turns into the light. I can come in straight up and down and make a very, very straight line just by doing that. Well, I made a, you know, you don't want to have a ton of paint on there, that's for sure. But you can just make little tiny lines. If the paint is a little thinner, it works better. Okay, for instance, if I want to make this uh, lamp post, I'll make it just have a little bit of light on it. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but it works. Um, I got too many blobs on here. I've got to be careful. You can get all kinds of different effects by just, I, I, I can do rigging on boats with that. Usually if it's a little thinner paint, it works better. And that way I don't have, you know, big blobs. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. Like that. Okay, and then I'm going to wipe it off. And then I'm going to try it in the black, which is much thinner. And see if I can make a mark on away from the light. I'm going to hold my hand right there. There, see that? Okay, there's the shadow part. So I'm gonna do it again. Yep, my, my card like that. And then uh, I've got a straight line. It's kind of tipped. I better make sure I got it straight up like that. Ooh, that works. So I can come in also with a one that's cut a little bit. Let's see, and I can make the inside of the windows like that. I just drew down into there. Uh, let's see if I've got a bigger one. Let's try this bigger one over here. Okay, you with me? Yeah, okay. Bigger one. I'll see if I want to make a nice straight line. I can come in like that and create that, that straightness if I want to. Okay, uh, let's find out. Let's go up in here and do this. And create that straight line and how about on our let's see we got this one yep gotta make sure you're in here there we go i do hope any of you guys that are in mccall and i know there's some of you that are gonna accidentally come up this weekend i've heard about a few they had that um we used to do this two Two weekends, uh, actually for two weeks out of the year, um, Winter Carnival was always the last week in January and the first week in uh, February. And um, uh, the weekends were just raucous. You know, you have your opening ceremony like the Olympics and you have um, fireworks and all kinds of crazy things that go on. And uh, fireworks and food and... Uh, beer gardens and um, karaoke and all kinds of things and now i'm going to turn this sideways like this let's go like this i'm going to make our awning now there see how straight that line is oh some of you guys are going happy day she's got a straight line in here um but it after uh the uh we had we shut her down like everybody else during the pandemic and then what happened was we discovered that people really needed a break. And so they cut it back to three days instead of 14. And we're testing it out. I know that's going to be disappointing to some of you. 
you've always had a problem on the second weekend a lot of the times there's just isn't that a neat little tool i just love this yeah works better than a bank card yeah so uh anyway we finally um realized that that uh, well that we needed to just maybe test out the waters and try try a little more condensed um, time rather than spreading it out so long we do a uh, huge 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 um, snow sculptures well we couldn't have done that this week there just wasn't any snow so that was kind of rough all right here's that line there wow this is really fun I hope you try this I'm putting that line there make sure I've got it and let's go right here there's a nice shadow right there out there if I miss it doesn't matter it's just kind of part of the interest of it right now I'm just going around and I'm putting in some of the obvious darks with my little straight line if I can get that you got to get enough paint on it now I what I am discovering is that the the paint now I've got a, a thing that I would like to adjust take a q-tip wipe that off the paint that works the best is the thinner paint okay so I've got this paint right here this is acrylic it's pouring acrylic well you can just thin your paint out a little bit uh, with either water or a medium and then you'll have it all right uh, so make sure it's not too thick because I just tried it with the thick paint and it didn't work as well so you know live and learn we all keep learning Yay. Yeah, I did want to make a, a little bit of a shout out again to my beloved stepmom who watches my show. Hi, Carol. She had a, a nasty fall this week and uh, she's doing all right. She's doing okay. But yeah, that was a bit of a scare. Do not fall down. Do not fall down. That's the main thing. Um, falling is really not good for you. you. Oh, dear me. Anyway, blessings on you, and I do hope that this week was a little bit better. I hope it was a little better. Hmm. Okay, now more straight lines. This is the best tool so far. I love it. It's like, you know, tap and go, only you're just tapping on your canvas. Got that going across. Here's the awning. I'll just shape that just slightly off. There we go. And. Here's one over these windows, like that. It lasts for a while. That's pretty neat. You can make multiple uh, little lines. And I'm going to raise these windows up just a bit because I need some space between that little roof line and the other one. So I'm going to raise that up. I need to cut one of these into a smaller piece. That would work really, really a lot better. And especially for things like, okay, I've got to do a sign over here. So I can put a, a little sign. Let's see what that is. It's a sign that goes like that. And then there's some uh, little, you know, you can just kind of go, okay, there's this sign. This is really, really fun. Let's do that. A couple more. Now, the one thing that you got to watch out for when you're getting carried away like this is that you have... Uh, you've got some darks and some, um, okay, that was fun. So you've got some really dark contrast between the black and the white. And so, you know, you got to watch out that you don't just cover the whole thing, unless that's your style and that's what you want to do. Okay. That's okay. But be careful that you don't, that you lose wherever you've decided your focus is going to be. I don't know where my focus is right now. When I go to paint it, I'll figure that out. But right now, I'm just kind of having some fun. I don't want a lot of focus on the edge of the canvas over here. I want, uh, when I come back in, and maybe if I paint it as a night scene, I will want that focus to be maybe right here as the light will be nice and glowy right there. And so it'll be this orange, beautiful night light and then uh, it'll fade out into the distance. Now, for fun, I'm gonna come in with, what? A big, huge paintbrush, 
giant paintbrush, giant paintbrush. And I'm going to now take some white. I've got a little palette I'm working on down here, a little bit of black. And I want to really coat, coat this road a little bit more. Oh, that looks nice and shiny with those uh, bristles. It works great. Just go around, around. This is so different, you guys, than what I normally do. I hope it's not driving you crazy. You know, you can put your requests in. You want to have puppy paintings, or I did that last week. We did what? The, the pears. I love doing that. And uh, I've got um, some more pear paintings. I did an apple painting. Oh, my goodness. I should have shown it to you. Um, that is just real fun. Um, in a green bowl, some green apples in a green bowl this last week. And so we might do one of those. Now I'm getting, I'm just thinking about direction right now and making kind of some action and, and uh, that's really nice. Okay, this is all this super loose, a little black, a little white, very loose. And it gets bigger as it comes forward at you. So we'll get real, real small up here. And then it is kind of dark like that. I'm happy. I'm really happy. Yeah, in the morning, I'm going to probably come in here and go, were there gremlins in here? What in the world did I paint last night? If you've got a big distance of something, you want to remember that the focus is going to have more contrast like this would be a really nice contrast that's a nice contrast um but i'll probably raise that up just a little bit but uh, if you're going way back into the distance you want to make sure you um kind of mute down your colors and your tonal values they aren't quite as sharp so see these lines right here these vertical lines are really popping forward and I really like that because that know that helps you to know where you're looking. Awesome. That's so great. Okay. Now, get this big brush again and I haven't really rinsed it out, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to come across and do well. This is just a little bit of snow and it's really kind of blotchy a little bit. I'm putting just kind of large lumps of snow as though there has been some that be fun. A little more there. And then I'm going to put that brush back in, go back in with my, my weirdo little credit card. The only thing I want to use a credit card for anyway, anymore. And then I can go in and kind of make the, the, the lines on that roof. Isn't that an easy way to do it? I just put just caked on a bunch of, of uh, white paint and then put on your, your roof line like that. Let's get a little bit darker underneath the eave. Right there, just re-emphasize that a little bit. And wow, that really worked great. I love it. Okay, now, uh, oh, and now I'm gonna, I think what I'll do at this stage is I'm gonna rinse out, actually I'm gonna get some white gesso. I use the gesso for the paint rather than using regular paint. I don't know what the difference is in acrylic. Deborah, let me know. Deborah, let me know if there is a difference in acrylic paint. And so now I've got this. Uh, actually, I just wa I watered it up a little bit. So I've got some gesso with a little bit of water. And now I'm going to use my uh, card again. I'm going to use the other side that doesn't have black on it. And then I'm going to pick up some white and see if that works better. Okay, now where was I? I wanted some window sills somewhere. Where was over here? Yeah. Okay, so window sills kind of like that. Again, this is too too big, so I've, I've got a problem there. So I'll make, I'll make some smaller ones. See, that was done with the brush there and it's really clunky. I don't like that too much. So I will find, I'm gonna cut some old ones up into some smaller pieces. I'm gonna have a lot of fun doing that. It's gonna be awesome. Now, 
I'm grabbing a little Q-tip and now I want to put in a little bit of snow on top of this lamp post right here and up on this lamp post over here. We're just about done for tonight and I'll be happy to show you how far I get next week. We'll all uh, clue in on how far we got on this painting and we'll see you know we'll see if we can get it going a little bit further now i'm not going to paint on this one for you next week because i've got to get this one ready for the gallery very very shortly okay that's right so that's that and then it kind of goes off like that oh this is going to be so good don't you think i think so all right how's our time oh i think i'm all done for tonight thank you guys so much for joining me tonight i really really enjoyed this one a lot and i don't think i embarrassed myself too much do you all right hope not all right come see us up in mccall for winter carnival on february 23rd make sure you check that to make sure i'm not blowing some smoke it's not this weekend everybody not this weekend so don't come up until winter carnival unless you just want to hang out in the rain yeah it's real fun okay Love you guys, uh, and we'll see you again next Thursday at 7 Mountain Time, 6 o'clock Pacific Time, and who knows what London time. All right, see you later. Bye for now.